Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everyone, to a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. On Tuesdays, we like to discuss current events, and on Thursdays, uh, it's more teasing out what you're going to teach on Sundays. But today, Pastor, it, maybe it's not so much a current event, but in conversation with you yesterday, uh, we were talking and you mentioned something interesting. You, you said there are two kinds of pastors. And I wanted to see if you can share a little bit more about this. Yeah, I was speaking actually about something I had read, something that had been posted that I thought was interesting. And, and basically someone had posted something that sounded like, this is not an exact quote, but sounded like uh, there are two kinds of pastors, those who teach through the word of God and those who should get out of the pulpit, you know. <laughs> And so we were talking about that because of the value that we place on being a, a Bible expositor. And there are quite a number of men who seem to not understand the uh, purpose of, of uh, a church, the purpose of people gathering together and they confuse it apparently with some kind of social exercise or some kind of political rally or some kind of um, uh, counseling session or perhaps encouraging people to forms of self-help or whatever. And they take the Sunday morning sacredness of a pulpit and uh, they make it into something it's not intended to be. And so, yeah, that's what we were talking about a little bit yesterday. It's that there are pastors who are called pastor who don't actually really understand what the call of pastor is. There are those who don't understand that, that God has given some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers in order that they might equip the saints for the work of ministry. And the way that you equip the saints for the work of ministry isn't filling them full of the latest political rhetoric or who they're supposed to vote for, or how they see the last days uh, shaping up and all and giving their opinions and then trying to bolster them with, with statistics that they have found somewhere by Googling things. They're not actually giving Bible studies and there are many churches that don't. There are many who are on television today who, who um, I, I personally could not sit for 20 minutes in one of their quote unquote church services because Jesus is, is not the center of what's going on. It's very often it's uh, the pastor talking about his exploits or those whom he knows or places that he's been or those whom he advises or you name it. But it's not a solid Bible study. And at my age especially, I, I don't have time to uh, kind of like pick and choose through what's being said as to what is scripture and what is not. and what is opinion and what is just solid Bible teaching, solid Bible exegesis where you get into the scripture and determine the meaning of the passage. There's a lot of what is called eisegesis today, which is reading into the passage that which you would like to see there and then using it to bolster a point that you've come to in a presupposition. There's an awful lot of that today. So yeah, we were talking about that. Um, somebody responded to that post by saying, oh, all, all that Bible teaching does is creates division. <laughs> and I thought, what a, what a very uninformed way to think. Um, Bible teaching is naturally going to create a division in the sense of, you know, truth from error is going to be um, revealed, right? It, there's truth here and there's error there. The truth is going to naturally reveal the error. And so yeah, if you want to say that, but this person who wrote this long diatribe against teaching the Bible and then starting to quote, misquote and quote scripture to bolster their point, that, that caused me great concern because this person thought that their thoughts were valuable enough to actually write out so all could read them when in fact they were so uninformed and so just wrong I began to wonder how many people agree with this sloppy thinking where you say 
that, that the Bible is not important to be taught and then you start trying to quote the Bible to bolster the point that it's not to be taught. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Thy word I have hid in mine heart that I might not sin against you. And God tells us, you know, to, to obey him, to do those things which he commands. And, and the, the call of the teacher is to, to present and clarify those things so that people can hear what God says and rightly understand it because it's been rightly divided. And that's where the uh, pastor teacher comes into the body of Christ and this blatant ignorance of the things of God. And then to actually put your opinions out there for people to read and be influenced by is a tragic condition in the church today, John. And so now that's with what, what used to be called a layman. That's a person who doesn't have a pastoral or elder or deaconate position, but it's there. And so, yeah, I was looking at this post and I was reading the quote and I said, you know, there's truth. I've been saying that uh, kind of thing now for many years. I, I've said, if you cannot teach the word of God, get out of the mm -hmm. pulpit. It is not a place for you. You influence people for eternity. And just this last Sunday, when we were looking at Jesus is speaking to his apostles. These are the men who are to take his message throughout the world. And he says, if, you're, if your hand offends you, cut it off. If your eye offends you, pluck it out. If your foot offends you, cut it off. It's better to go in lame uh, or to go in with one hand or to go in with one eye, to go into the kingdom of God than it is to enter completely whole into, into Haiti, into Guyana, into the, um, the lake of fire. And so that's, that, that's, that's talking about getting rid of the things um, that offend, getting rid of the things that would keep you from entering in. So be careful what you do, be careful what you see, be careful where you go. Because uh, when you're taking the wrong routes and doing the wrong things, you're gonna end up in the wrong place, right? Where did we get that idea from? From Jesus himself, who was speaking to his disciples and saying to them, you need to, you need to realize the cost of discipleship is very high. You yield yourself completely and you follow completely. Where do we get the instructions in following if it isn't from the word of God? And if we have pastors who are more concerned with who's the next president than where you're gonna spend eternity with, those pastors ought to go into politics and a real pastor ought to take over the church to lead them to heaven because that's really what I'm supposed to be doing. Well, Jesus was so blatant about <clears throat> dealing so harshly with sin where he's using remove your hand or pluck out, cut off your hand, pluck out your eye. Then I wonder how much more is the warning against those pastors who are on the pulpit yeah. and not being removed. Well, you know, if, if you cause one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for you to have a millstone tied around your neck and cast into the deepest portion of the Sea of Galilee. So Jesus took it very seriously, and that's why he would tell and correct the scribes and the Pharisees and all who would come in opposition. That's why he, he called them false guides. That's why he said that you're like whitewashed tombs. That's why he spoke so harshly towards him because he said, these people are sitting in Moses' seat, you know, with authority, giving out his law. He said, so the things that they say when they're correctly interpreting and presenting, those things do, but the way that they live do not follow. So no, from the very beginning of the, in, in the old and in the new, there are, there are warnings about bad teaching, false teachers and all. And um, the sign that we're living in the last days, the sign, according to Matthew 24, is deception. And so pastors who are in the pulpit and are not preaching God's word, but are actually, I don't know, collecting spiritual scalps or bodies in their church. I don't know what their purpose is. I honestly don't. I don't know what their purpose is. I don't know why they're there go into politics or go into some kind of public work that you can do your good things for people and help them. It's not that we don't need people to be influenced and inspired to do right, but I don't go to church and I, and I never have so that I, I might walk out knowing who to vote for. 
I just don't. I, I, I think if I read the word of God and I vote my conscience and I'm in a church that teaches God's word to help to form it, I think I'll do just fine. But there are, there are numbers of places now that I could point to that are disappointing and, and grieve my heart and I'm certain grieves the heart of the Lord in many ways also. Not that I'm speaking for him, but that was part of what we were talking about just yesterday. And so it's important that we take those, especially the pulpit, pastors take the pulpit very seriously because literally, pastor, it's eternities in the balance. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, well, pastor, thank you for sharing that. That was, our conversation was interesting yesterday and I thought this would be a good topic for our conversation today. And so thank you, pastor, for sharing. And I want to invite our church family to our church services tomorrow evening, Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. as you're continuing chapter 4 of Ephesians. Mm -hmm. We'll be looking at verses 7 through 10 tomorrow. We're, we're looking at the gifts that God gave to the church. Oh. And interestingly enough, we'll look at verses 7 through 10 tomorrow as a, as a preliminary, but we move on into verse 11 following and the purpose of the Word of God being taught. And why did God give uh, pastors and teachers to the church and all of that? Then he calls... He calls uh, pastors and teachers, apostles, prophets, and evangelists, pastors and teachers. He speaks of them as, as gifts of grace that God gave to the body of Christ. Wow, that is and so we'll look at those, those things soon. It's a two part in that chapter. And then shortly after that, you'll be on your way to Israel. We're going to Israel. Yeah. Oh, exciting. Looking forward to it. And we'll uh, even try to get some things out here done for the church family as we're out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, Talking, you know, probably one of the greatest gifts, Pastor, the church is, I mean, I'm sitting right here, Pastor, you know, so. <laughs> I was waiting for a response. How long are you going to stay there? <laughs> I would just wait. <laughs> You're not a gift to the church. <laughs> oh, thank you, church family, for tuning in. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor David, for your time, and we look forward to seeing you soon. All God right. bless you.